one small announcement here. Most of us, I shouldn't, I mean most of you here are fountain pen experts. I am a fountain pen user and there are others also like me who have used fountain pens and do use fountain pens but not as experts just because they want to, they love writing with fountain pens. So in today's session, we have three speakers of eminence who would be talking about various aspects of fountain pens, introduce us to the various aspects of fountain pens that we were not aware of. The second count is that Calcutta, this is the first time that we are trying to host this Inked Happiness Lifetime Award show at such a level. We have been together for the last two nights, two days, extensive discussions have happened as to how to take or promote the use of fountain pens. Amongst us, we also have two very prominent fountain pen manufacturers, Mr. Motwani and Mr. Singhi. What is this inked happiness about? Chom Ganguly is generally known as not being so normal. If you are normal, you are a mediocre guy. Chom brings to the table a lot of eccentricities, but all those eccentricities lead to a kind of creative output that we cherish. One amongst them is collecting fountain pens. He is reputed to have in his collection more than 7,000 pens. Now people talk about, some of the people claim that he has about 10,000 pens in his kitty, but he himself doesn't know how many he has, but he has a substantial collection of fountain pens. Now don't, don't put me to test because I haven't counted his fountain pens, neither do I know how many pens he has, but I am told with authority, on authority, that he has that many. That he is globally acclaimed amongst the fountain pen aficionados, of course, is undisputed. Inked Happiness is a blog that is looked forward to by all, almost all, who love fountain pens. And his voice is an authoritative one in this field. So Chom calls himself a fountain pen evangelist. And he has taken it upon his own shoulders to promote fountain pen. So if you talk to him, he doesn't talk about much about the technicalities of fountain pen. So here is one story that I should share with you. Chom and I are associated with one of the 
most important, going to be a very important research institute in the city. It's called CREST. It is headed by Professor Shobhoshachi Vattacharya. He's a very well-known physicist. He was here as a vice chancellor of presidency. Later on, he moved on to head the TIFR, Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. And uh, it was found that Chom is also his relative. In fact, he is Chom's mama. But when we presented him with a fountain pen, he looked at it. And being an academician and academic that he is, he said, there is a lot of physics in it. Now, the same thing I do not know. I am not a physicist. By training, I'm an economist. So I wouldn't know whether the same thing can be talked, said about uh, jota pen, a biro. But fountain pen has many virtues. In the forthcoming session, the remaining speakers, the other speakers, will be talking about them. So most of us know Chom, so I think no reason to sort of uh, you know, gas him up anymore, but Chom is a brother to me, and he, is, he has done a human's work in promoting fountain pain. Now let's come back to Shulekha. As you can see, as you have already seen, Shulekha is one of the co-presenter of this show. Now, Shulekha has been part of our life. Most of us who, are, who have lived, walked this walk, world for about, say, last 50 years or so, would remember this thing, Shulekha Royal Blue. And Shulekha Executive Black. It's one of the few houses, somehow, that has managed to live. It was set up in 1933, if I am not mistaken, in the 30s, as part of the Swadeshi movement. Then it closed down due to various reasons. I keep saying that on the, same, on the road that Shulekha has its own establishment and factory is also the dilapidated factory of Krishna Glass. Krishna and Shulekha closed down, and both of them are heritage companies for us Bengalis. Both of them closed down due to various reasons, and the reasons almost were the same. But Shulekha, like Phoenix, came back from the ashes, and it's with us. So let's give, him, give Koshik a big hand for his effort to bring it back into life. He has done a great job. Today's session will start with Professor Y. Pitka. I met Prof. Professor Pitka day before yesterday. I never knew. He's a professor, of course, he was the dean of architecture at JJ School. But his passion, what he said, or what he claimed, was fountain pen architecture. Now, this was a term that I had never heard architecture that too of fountain pen is passionate about it. And there was another thing that took me by surprise. A pen that he was carrying, two pens in fact. One that he still has in his pocket is the one that I had used during my school days. And the other is a museum piece. More blanc Agatha Christie. I've heard about it, I've read about it, but it was the first time 
with my naked eyes and with my hands, you know. I felt it. So let's give Professor Pitka a big hand and please come over Professor Pitka and enlighten us as to what you have in your pen drive. everybody. It gives me great pleasure to come all the way to Calcutta and uh, be present for the award to be given to me for my passion in fountain pens. I am also happy having taught for too many years, 28 years in JJ College and 7 years in Academy that I have students all over and I was so happy to see three of my students here in the audience. So it's always a great pleasure that when you post something on Facebook, somebody looks at it and drops in. So my pleasure. I would like to, to begin with thank Inked Happiness, Sulekha, and the organizers for having invited me here and honoring me. I've been doing all kinds of things, apart from teaching, collecting fountain pens, collecting stones, crystals, fossils, and my other hobbies included anything and everything, right from my interest in flying, a member of Bombay Flying Club for some time. Couldn't complete that course because of change of location of the Bombay uh, airport for repairs. Did gliding and almost as a gift to myself when I was uh, 58 years or thereabout, I could also do skydiving. And of course that was only for four kilometers so I am planning to jump out of a running aircraft at six kilometers soon. All kind of things excite me because I remember a line that what have you done last for the first time in your life? So what you have done yesterday, you have done. Aaj kya kia? And I have experienced one thing that 24 hours is a huge amount of time to do anything and everything that you want to do. And that, I, that is short enough to give excuses that I couldn't get time to do it. So apart from writing books, 10, 12, I had come to Calcutta some years back to shoot Vishnupur, which I intend to come again. And I had a friend here, uh, Mrs. Name, who's putting up a small museum in future. I'll come to see his museum and shoot Vishnupur. I've been on Havra Bridge some time ago to do some photography and all kind of things. So I think. Passion is the essence of life. One of the slide also says this. And this slide which is over here was the one made in 2010 first. And the following slides have changed in the last 12 years. But I kept this slide because there was a workshop I conducted for 14 days talking on fountain pens. So a lot of people say, you're going to talk on fountain pens? So I mean, who uses a fountain pen? So I say, I have a one hour talk. She says, how can you talk for one hour? I say, I talk for one hour two days, three days, 14 days also. So it's in our blood and Shawm and others would know what fountain pen is to those who are who fall for it. Without taking more time, because uh, we have limited time, I will start my presentation. It takes you through the whole journey of fountain pen as I see it, which I conduct as a workshop in many colleges and school to spread awareness. Uh, there are some things which some of you would know there are some things that everybody would know, and there will be some things which nobody would have thought of, like what is the cost or the maximum cost of a fountain pen, and so on and so forth. So I think we can, uh, I request to shut this light off, and then we can see some beautiful images. Thank you. So I see uh, 
fountain pen as an instrument for writing and for me i look at the object of desire because i being an architect and having interest in art always look at things from aesthetic point of view there are many here in audience who are into uh, repair of fountain pen restoring fountain pen technical details of fountain pen ink specialists so on and so forth for me it is the color of the ink that is of prime importance what it looks like and the shape of the ink bottle the pen the clip and as he said and some of you can see this was uh, as they say the agatha christie fountain pen it took me to sell quite a few of my fountain pens and put in money to buy this uh, used piece in good condition which has a snake on top i have a better image in the slide show over here also so it's an object of desire and uh, this slide was done in 2010 when i did a workshop in nid with the students to design fountain pens quite a few of you here in audience are elderly and would see remember a series called believe it and not in uh, 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 in a newspaper and also there were books believe it and not there are three slides which says that rolls royce or mont blanc both cost the same it would surprise you because the rolls royce today costs about 5 crores of rupees uh, the minimum one and if i say a mont blanc can also co cost 5 crores could surprise few believe it or not a lexi 5 which my son uses and he almost refuses to use a fountain pen that i use and one block both write the same i mean almost you get a good ball pen and it writes the same but rolls royce and lexi 5 are not the same and that's how i want to qualify what a pen is a different pen and how they differ from one to another basically we write or use fountain pen for communication this is a very well calligraphed uh, uh, image a b c d written scripted we we write to express to tell stories to inform people and it was one of the best gift of communication among human beings and this is one of the old advertisement i have collection of not many but just eight or 10 old advertisements that parker 51 always advertise itself as the graduating pen or the pen for the graduates and I remember times when that would be the first pen you would receive at maybe your tenth, eighth, twelfth, now twelfth, and so on and so forth. And I wish this comes back. Gift a pen to somebody and see the pleasure. When we look at the whole game of writing, I mean, there are nine words here: uh, writing, calligraphy, Zen, function, aesthetic, passion, marks, moksh, meditation. One can read them diagonally, horizontally, because writing can be calligraphy also. And there are Zen masters who do calligraphy vertically downwards. For students, it is very functional. You write an exam, you get marks diagonally. Writing can be very beautiful, and it can be very meditative also. I was reading a book on Zen, and it says that some people who could not meditate well were asked to do calligraphy for concentration and some people who could not excel in calligraphy were told to do meditation so they could excel so it's a highly connected field writing meditation aesthetics and moksh so the postcard which is not used much today we use email and not even email whatsapp and all that and we all know about the left brain the right brain head heart passion reason so i always see writing as what you have a pleasure versus a pathological report i mean i see these type letters as pathological reports i mean they mean nothing to me but you see a hand written letter there is a pleasure in writing there is a pleasure in reading there is a pleasure in collecting and so on and so forth so it's all the game of hand versus the font and the last line lehia lehias of kalba devi it's a gujarati word Uh, there is a center in Charni Road in Bombay where they are rewriting all the Jain scripts by hand using waterproof ink. So when asked why are you writing, why don't you scan? Well, I was scanning, etc. So all have happened. We have scanned that everything, but we want it to be rewritten, and that's what they are doing. There, there's a set of people who are sitting day in and night to just write and rewrite and write things like that. This is a very old uh, envelope which I have in my collection from 1937. uh written to somebody in pune so i just got and they used to send send sample nibs over here <coughs> relief sample nibs and i look at writing a letter versus a email i mean first if you write a letter it is expression of the person you can feel how what is the expression that person must be having while writing whether email is just an information 
Uh, you have to have patience. You have to take out a piece of paper, take out ink, take out pen, write a letter, fold it, put it in an envelope, go to a post office, put a stamp, post it, and it takes some time to reach. Of course, email has the speed. You type something and send, and it goes to America, England, or wherever you want to send it. But the first is reflection of the self, where the other is highly impersonal. I wonder if people write love letters on emails, and how would they look? <laughs> At some point, I have a reference. There's a ink of love by Mont Blanc. It's a scented ink, and it has the fragrance of rose. So imagine receiving a letter when you open. There's a fragrance of rose, and somebody is telling you, "I love you." That's a different thing than opening an email or something like that. So, what I said in the beginning was, passion should be seen as an essential function uh, function of life, and also mind. So, a pen is an object. It has function and it has desire. And just for history sake of it, I mean, first formal patent as accepted by most of the people in the world was 12th of February, 1884. And of course, this was a small ad from Parker saying that how uh, you use chisel and metal and so on and so forth till you could start posting your letters. And I'm very happy to know that um, down south east, Raj Mundri was one of the first pen manufacturers 1928 has accepted people who make pens and who still make pens. Very unfortunately, the pens are not of a great quality and for some reasons they have not improvised. But history is history and that's one way it started. And in that uh, factory, they have a letter written by Mahatma Gandhi himself. When Mahatma Gandhi was traveling from Calcutta to Chennai, Madras, he was at Rajmundri station on the east coast where he was presented a Ratnam fountain pen saying that for your Swadeshi movement, here is a Swadeshi pen. He asked some of his people to get down there, look at the factory, take a pen from there and he wrote this uh, and there was an article uh, much later in Indian Express in 1991 which I had a copy of saying that how he enjoyed an Indian enterprise making fountain pens in the Swadeshi times. And now let me take you on a journey from a Swadeshi Yatra to the Videshi Yatra. This is Mahatma Gandhi fountain pen by Mont Blanc. Very few might know that there was a pen made in his name. Mont Blanc brings out a 14 lakh fountain pen and this is where the controversy started. All people, that, those who know of Mahatma Gandhi, I mean he would just have a, a cloth around his body. He had given up on everything. He fought for the country. So what he wore was just a 100 rupee cloth. And Mont Blanc makes a fountain pen. There were two pens that they made. One was 3,000 pieces costing about 1,80,000. Other pen was 14 lakhs of rupees. It got into a major controversy. The article is quite long. People went to court that how can you use, make a pen in the name of a person who had nothing and you are selling a pen in his name for 14 lakhs. There was a controversy. Can they use the name Mahatma Gandhi and so on and so forth. This is the 14 lakh pen. There was a figure of Mahatma Gandhi in walking posture. This is in platinum. The lines were representing the spindle of Khadi. There was a saffron on the clip. And this limited edition was to 241 pieces. There was a gold thread, actual gold thread tied on the cap over here, as you see over here. And why 241 miles? Because that was the distance that Gandhiji traveled on salt march from Ahmedabad to the coast. So that goes with the research and making, which I'll come to a little later. And, and the thread of gold was represented and equivalent to the spindle and the khadi that was made. But it all got into a major controversy till a court case was filed. And they did lose the case because Mont Blanc did say that we have taken the legal rights from his grandson, Tushar Gandhi, and they paid Tushar Gandhi 84 lakhs of rupees. And that was presented in court. And then the question comes, ki who does the name Mahatma Gandhi belong to? Does it belong to individual, to people, to nation? Again, a second case was filed in Chennai then. And there, this what is written on the right says that no one can register or trademark or design which bears any emblem name or prescribed under Section 9A, the name of or pictorial representation of Mahatma Gandhi, Jawaharlal Nehru, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, or Prime Minister of India, or the word Gandhi, Nehru, and Shivaji cannot be used. And when this came up, the pen got banned in India. Typically being in India, it is still available in black market. That's a different story. And they had extraordinarily beautiful Mahatma Gandhi ink. I have one of this ink, saffron in color. 
it is just beautiful. It is actually like saffron dipped into water and uh, that's the Mahatma Gandhi fountain penning. So there are so many stories and stories and I can go on and so when I say I talk for half an hour, one hour, two days, 14 days, I mean these stories can go on. So I'll just mention two or three important things where like uh, in the name of Sir Edmund Hillary, Mount Everest pen was made by Crone and quite an expensive pen and they used a crystal on the top of the pen where the button is and the body has an inlay work in silver that represents Mount uh, Everest. The body had the design of crystals which are from the you know, ice crystals and that was sold and that is how they could respect uh, Mount Everest fountain pen. Of course, we have very degraded uh, Everest pan masala or something to in respect of Everest. That's a different story in India. Then we have, uh, like we have um, companies saying that we have no brands. It's a very popular story. A Waterman company uh, was very popular and then, I mean, uh, there was Ellie Waterman company, which was the original and they had a big fight over there. And it was like saying the same name here and same name there because people just go and ask for a Waterman pen without knowing whether it is an Ellie Waterman pen or an A Waterman pen. And finally, I mean, as you written over here, here at the bottom, about in 1912, that's almost 110 years back, Ellie Waterman sued A Waterman company and forced them to put a disclaimer saying not connected with Ellie Waterman company on all the pens and all the advertisements. And they found it such difficult to do. In 1920, they closed the factory. But there can be court cases on an ordinary object, what you call as a fountain pen. Now, of course, there's one very, very small another story. I was in the shops in Fountain and I found a pen, the YM Fonge Fountain Pen, I as I call it, and the circle of antiques because there are collectors. We heard that Shaum has 8,000, 10,000 pens, somebody has 14,000 pens in audience. I at one point had 600 fountain pens. And as I said earlier, and when I showed the first three slides that the Lexi and Mont Blanc write the same, my son himself says ki are baba kuthe tu paise takto ithe in marathi he says because one pen which i bought recently was 45000 and my son being ca he says you should have given that me i would have put them in stock after a couple of years 45000 pen might get 20000 my stocks would get 95000 i said what happens if harshad mehta walks in and things like that but anyway jokes apart uh, i found a pen with is inscribed phone on a conklin kind of a pen and i asked Mr. Fonge, who was an architect, that I read similar name. He said, yeah, yeah, that's my father's name. So I said, oh, did he collect pens? Yeah. So I said, is he alive? No, no, he died some years ago. They said, but this pen has his name. So I said, ha. So I said, you want it? He said, how much? I said, 3,000 it is costing. Well, then I said, no. So I said, what happened? Well, no, no, he was a big collector. We shifted ourselves. We don't know where we lost the pens. And it was just thrown away, given away, and all kind of things. So there's a circle of antiques that, you know, there are collectors, they value their pens, then there's no follow-up. Either they should be given to museums or even sold off, what I am trying to do. Otherwise, they go back, back down drain and again, they are picked up by people like us. And they, so, as I said, the circle of antiques and there are many other stories which had gone on and on. This is the fountain pen that uh, was mentioned in the inaugural talk, Agatha Christie. Agatha Christie, everybody knows, who is a great writer, and this is the clip, beautiful clip having a snake, cobra, and the eyes are in ruby, and on the nib, there's a cobra hood drawn. <coughs> that's what goes under research, and that's what costs to make this pen so expensive. But these things are very beautiful, very beautiful. I mean, you're looking at the sheer aesthetics of things, this is life. This is a fountain pen for a great filmmaker, Alfred Hitchcock. So I've been following for last decade on uh, research done by Mont Blanc on fountain pens and what goes in designing pen. And so when I go to a college or a, or a small workshop, I take a bunch of 10, 20, 30, whatever number of students come. I ask them to select a person or a country or an event and ask them to write about it, sketch about it. And that's how I can propagate. And then I find points. And how will you put those points that you have scribbled onto a design of a fountain pen? So uh, this. Alfred Hitchcock pen has these red lines, which is blood. It has the film strip on the cap bottom, which you can see at the bottom left. And that is a knife, which was used in the film Psycho. The, the elderly people here would have seen the film Psycho. This is the knife which was used to kill the lady in the bathtub. And 
and when the lady was killed of course the film was in black and white so the the cheaper version has gray lines on the on the pen and this is the blood that flew on the curtains in the bathtub this is the other one where they could represent these lines of water drops on the curtain so that's all that goes in thinking designing a fountain pen and this is the portrait of face of alfred hitchcock on the nib Franz Kafka fountain pen. Those who read a lot know Franz Kafka was a very intrigued writer, and therefore the body of the cap. Very briefly, I'll be saying all these stories. Uh, looking at the time, was circle at the top and rectangle square at the bottom, and because he died in very awkward situation, his body was found after a few days. So the the body has dead blood color, maroonish red. and because he was not known for 23 years for his writing the star on this fountain pen is the only fountain pen where the star is sunk inside the cap on the top what you see on the bottom left everywhere the star is right on the top of the pen on the top that's mont blanc here they have suppressed because even the writer was known after 23 years and uh, metamorphosis his novel which got the idea first uh, saw a cockroach and on the nib there's a cockroach i mean think i mean uh, there were mahatma gandhi on thing there were cockroach there were uh, things like that and this is art deco fountain pen won't go into the deeper details it's a clip in art deco style and a lily which represents art deco in the flower world on the nib we have those who are into architecture would know art deco film there was a person by the name thomas mann So there was a pen made in his memory called Thomas Mann fountain pen, and they actually had a complete building drawn on the nib. That's Mr. Thomas Mann, a collector of architecture. He he purchased bungalows and bungalows, and the nib has a building. Visconti made pens. This is the famous the scream painting. Which is engraved in nine to five silver on the pen body. We have spider, spiders on the body of Visconti, and this pen was particularly made for the uh, Arabian countries. And this is one more point where the star was deviated in plus point of a rounded star, dead a pointed star. I mean, you can see the. cap on the right has the star with a slight point and not rounding at the top if you have a closer look i don't have an image of it and that is how they make that went in the design i have been carefully looking at the design section there is a whole department they appoint designers they work for time they work for 2 years 3 years 1 year in designing a pen and that what cost the research and making of a pen so ultimately fountain pens can be used these expensive ones and that's why they cost more as style statement and status symbol and uh, those who know i mean uh, they look at the pocket and some of us would see there is a star on the top of a pen on the pocket mont blanc always is 10000 or 20000 plus becomes style and that's the same thing that somebody was saying that an hmt janta watch which i also have the winding one cost 2000 or less than that and a rolex can cost 20 lakhs of rupees so possibly both show the time but one shows time and one shows the time in which you are living and things like that that goes for the pens also and mont blanc which i have been reading in detail as multiple models at 75th years they made a the the line 75 years of passion and soul in the space of passion o they had a diamond over there so beautiful looking pen but even a big company like mont blanc was made to bend down in israel and in places where they found that the six pointed star the countries refused to allow the pen sale because they say that's the star of david and in those countries for a limited time they had a mont blanc with a triangle on top and ultimately they found a designer who said okay star of david has six points let make a, let's make a star of five points for those countries and there's a five pointed star on the top of mont blanc pens and no one's going to count the number of points and they could they could win the battle and get the pin back in those markets where david was there and of course you could buy a hero pen this was 2010 when i remember buying a pen was 35 rupees hero last in pune pen show i bought a hero for 90 rupees so it went up by three times and that time this was the most expensive pen costing 3 and 1/2 crores to the shock and surprise 
the pens have crossed 3, 5, 7, 9, 10 crores. The last fountain pen a couple of months ago was sold in by them called the Taj Mahal. To my knowledge, the most expensive pen at about 15 and a half crores of rupees for one piece. And the press note said that three of those pens were bought in India also. Imagine, I mean, you can just walk next to a Rolls Royce and ask him to give you three Rolls Royce and exchange a fountain pen with him or something like that. And of course, this is Leban, which is diamond studded. I saw it in one of the pen exhibitions, um, uh, which was at World Trade Center, it's super expensive. Cartier makes pens. There are many other brands uh, which one can go on and on. Monte Graffa is there, Michelangelo. This pen is made out of stone because Michelangelo worked in stone, stone sculpture. So this is a pen which is a body of stone, beautifully carved. The Mayan pen. This pen is very special that they made very limited pieces. They made only 10 pieces because the cap is out of gold and the body is using mammoth elephant ivory. So they actually found some elephant, uh, which is what they call as mammoth elephant, buried 12,000 to 15,000 years ago. That ivory was used to make body. Uh, in Pen World magazine some years ago, I read an article because there were only 10 in, in number. There's a person in Middle East who wanted to acquire all 10 out of his passion and he today has seven out of the 10 pens. He sent a team of people looking around the world who has the other nine pens. He could get six more and he had one. He's still trying to get the remaining three and is willing to pay any price for that because then he wants to say that I have all the 10 pens which were once made by somebody. And, things. and of course, we've got so many brands, Aurora, Fisher, Space, Sailor, and so on and so forth. And William Penn is a shop that you must have often been seeing at airports. And uh, this is another beautiful pen, uh, Omas, which is a triangular cross section because when you hold a pen, there's a triangle form in the middle of the three fingers and that fits perfectly. Use a uh, Omas and you will see how beautiful that is. Of course, Omas also makes pens in uh, solid gold, platinum, diamond plated. And then we have Monte Graffa ma making uh, wooden pens. Briar wood has been used for these pens, which is lovely and Danitro has this Maki process fountain pens made and Visconti makes quite a few. I mean, there are stories and stories of these pens. They're just beautiful images. You can have a look and if time permits, at some point when we meet again, we can discuss these. Visconti makes even retro pens and, you know, very flashy looking pens, a waterman pen that can stand on top of a table, serenite. It's got a curved body and in the cross section, there's a vertical place for fitting the pump. Basically, if you look at a standard pen, uh, the whole game of pen as aesthetic, I look at it as the button, the clip, the cap, the ring, the body, and the nib. And this is where the whole cost fluctuates and where the name of branding, the name of style statement in it happens. Look at this. It's almost like a garland, necklace. This is Mont Blanc, very special pen, huge cost. They've got a floating diamond at the top and the clip is almost like a necklace and then there are the clips. Clips differ. I have got some images of some old clips that you can see over here. Vintage clips, floating star. Then we have the bodies made out of jade, lapis, porcelain, and even meteorite. I saw a fountain pen. The body was made out of meteorite. And, and obviously, meteorite is not somewhere on the earth. It just comes out from somewhere in the sky, and they use it for making a thing. Sheffers has clip with a dot. Parker has an arrow, Karendash has a sword. So people who know about pens and when they look around people's pocket, they can look just at the clip and say, okay, oh, this is this pen. The same happens with the look at the button at the top of it. And of course, this is a very beautiful retractable pen, which is also now made in India by people. And uh, this is a complete section which I used for teaching in NID where the various filling mechanisms could be discussed. And the other beautiful thing, because writers use all kinds of nibs, you have extra fine, fine, medium, broad, double broad, triple broad, oblique medium, oblique broad, and oblique double broad. And in fact, recently I could get an oblique triple broad in 149 Mont Blanc. A little expensive, but it's almost two millimeters, and if you are writing diagonally, it's less than 0.1. And pull it out vertical, it's thick. That's the beauty of those nibs. Stipula makes Beautiful nibs. Sailor has fantastic collection of nib and special nibs. They are turned upward 
and uh, I remember when I had one such pen, somebody did ask me, pen gir gaya kya? I said, nahi, nahi, paisa diya hai nip ko aisa karne ke liye. And uh, there was a, a guy from Japan who had come for nip tuning in uh, Phoenix Mill. I got two of my pens, the nips turned upward so that you could hold a pen vertical and it's a fine line, hold a pen at 45 degrees, it is thicker, hold at 30 degrees, it is double wide and and while talking of the nib designs, I mean, we've got even windmills on top of a nib. Uh, we have the building which you saw, and one pen has a mosquito on the on the left that you can see. You saw a cockroach. You saw anything and everything. And of course, our own Mahatma Gandhi was seen on the nib. And sorry, these are the adjustable nibs of the old time. Ever sharp made adjustable nibs. So. In place of going in for different pens with different nib, broad, medium, so on and so forth, you could just slip that thing on the front, the nib would open up or close down and you can have different widths of lines drawn. This is Kai pens and uh, all kind of funny things. For the 18 rupee pen also, he gave a, a very uh, curious looking uh, card saying that it's only if the nib breaks in, the f in this order or that order, he'll replace the nib, but if it breaks in the other way, the guarantee is not there, so you better be careful and so on and so forth. And talking of uh, inks, I mean, I remember people thinking that we just have red, blue, green and so on and so forth, but I was at the wonderful Suleikha factory and I, I mean, my day was made. My Those who follow Facebook, I said my day was made and hats off to people at Suleikha and the owners who are very much here. Wonderful colors we, we are making in India and we have got these other companies, private reserve and all companies making, you know, colors which are pastel colors, bright colors, and what not. I mean, shades and shades. So it's no more a game of three and four colors. Might almost have a hundred colors available and beautiful ink bottles. I mean, I had a fairly large collection of ink bottles, which are, this is a very curious bottle which stands at an angle, Carindas, but inside a box, it stands vertical. They've designed a box such, when you put it inside the box, it remains vertical. Inside. When you keep it outside, it stands at an angle, it has a purpose, and a few ink bottles from the past, the old Sheffers, the Carter ink bottle from the history, pub, and you've got Noodler's ink, which makes invisible ink. And you will remember some of you using lemon water and uh, salt put in it and write with it, and when you heat the paper, you could read. So Noodler's makes an invisible ink, which can be read only in UV light. So they made an ink of that kind. Personal code ink was, I, I was shocked to see, Mont Blanc made an ink which has a DNA code because human DNA cannot be used. So they use plant DNA in the ink and it is kept in your name in their fixed reserves. The reason being that documents can be forged by your signature, somebody can copy your signature, but when you do DNA testing of the signature's ink, you can find out whether the, the ink belongs to you and you have signed it. Of course, somebody jokingly asked, what if the ink is stolen? I said, well, if you've got smart people, anything is possible and of course uh, before I go to the next slide I recently found a 100 ml ink which I would never be able to buy. Uh, it was elixir ink, elixir uh, gold ink by Mont Blanc. A small 50 ml bottle or so cost about $3,200 and $3,000 at 80 rupees is like two and a half lakhs of rupees but that bottle has 24 carat ink particles in it and they give a cards, they give you brown color, excellent quality paper, so you can write it on that brown paper with this gold ink, so it shimmers and shines, but at a cost of almost two and a half lakhs of rupees, and I wonder who has it, then there are uh, collectors who do all kind of things, there are books, people collect anything, I mean, uh, they collect stands, I met a friend who says, Ki nahi, pen many collect karta. I collect only the uh, stands, there are people who collect blotting papers, now, I don't know whether you get a blotting paper now. You go to 10 stationery stores and ask them, do you have a blotting paper? You look at your face and say, where have you come from? People collect blotting papers and blotters are still available. Even you get a Mont Blanc blotter at a high price and you get a Japanese blotter at 6,000 and you get a very crude Indian blotter at about 1,000 rupees. This is the blotter which was in my collection at one point of a time. Pen trays are another thing, and of course, uh, Sheffer's boxes and so on and so forth. There are some advertisement, I'll just skip very fast. Waterman's fountain pen, 
beautiful advertisements were made. Now you don't see them, but that there's a beauty in it. Look at it. On out of pen. This is an advertisement from 1903, which appeared in a magazine for Parker fountain pens. I have a copy of this in a large size. I made a poster out of it. It's, it's just beautiful to look at this. Cartiers make pens, and this is solid steel pens. Duoto makes pens. They have designs, and the advertisements are very sensuous type. Of course, and uh, we have shops. Pen Regalia was there, Manoj Pen Mart, Shukla and Company, Deccan Pen Store, Jemen Company, Chennai, and there are a whole lot of shops, and more shops should come up. I am told that a new shop is coming up in Pune, and for collectors, there are books. At point, I had 20 books on fountain pens. I mean, uh, when people ask, is fountain pen existing? I had a collection of 20 books. I mean, there's a book which is 440 pages, fountain pens of the world. And the same people have written a book called Fountain Pen of Japan, same size and expensive, 15,000 rupees for a book. But it has indexed each and every pen, pen made in Japan. The earlier one has indexed categorically which pens were made in the world, which parts of the world. So we have that, we have Fountain Pens of Japan, then we have got a book, one single book on Parker 50, and because Parker 51 was the world's most popular fountain pen. It came in various colors, various cap types, various body types, materials, nibs, all kind of things, and broad and medium and whatnot. So there's a regular book called Parker 51. Then we have fountain pens of United States, America, and United Kingdom. These are all book covers and gives a great uh, material to read. United States, there's another book written by Andrews and a magazine, which is a wonderful pen world magazine. It comes six times a year, and it's a magazine that covers articles, discussions, advertisements, lovely magazine. And a shop that you must visit if you're in New York called the Fountain Pen Hospital, one of the fairly large shop. I'm told I've never been able to go there. There are few places I would like to go is to New York to see this shop. I'm told that an uh, excellent huge museum of 20,000 square feet is there in Hamburg by Montblanc itself. They spent millions of rupees to make that museum of fountain pens. There are pen collectors of America. Uh, some long back I had been in connection with these people and the Writing Equipment Society. <coughs> Although they had an email and things like that, but it was great pleasure that when Writing Equipment Society people actually wrote you letters. and. And this is what I mean by expression. This is what I mean by the passion of writing. I mean, imagine if the same letter would have come in an email format. It would have been so boring. I would not make a slide out of it. And so they wrote about it. It's a long letter. It was saying, become a member, share your experiences, and so on and so forth. We have fountain pen shows. Luckily, now we are having fountain pen shows in India. We had, I think, three in Bombay, two in Pune, some in Ahmedabad, some in Delhi. and. I hope this picks up and uh, we, have, we should have shows and shows in all bigger or even tier one, tier two cities to get people aware of this. There are pen museums, as I said, in Hamburg, there is a Mont Blanc Museum, there's a Pelican Museum, there are museums in Japan. We have auctions, pen insurances, because obviously if the fountain pen is going to cost you lakhs of rupees or even a crore of a rupee and more, you better insure your fountain pens. and. We have pen collectors. Bill Cosby uh, is a brand ambassador for Fountain Pen Hospital. Then we have researchers, departments, where somebody is just working on thinking of what the next pen design should be. And then there are people who are pen historians and pen restorers. We have one gentleman here, Yusuf Mansoor, who's been restoring pens. And he'll be up on the stage soon to see you all. I mean, there are things. And we have people, you know, small people. Look at this beautiful card. The person in the shop is no more because of the economic things. Kalam Kutir by Krishnakant M. Parikh. And uh, I mean, of course, we have Ram. We had Ram Punjabi who died. Siraj Bhai, Gopal is no more. Amir Bhai uh, from Mumbra. He used to stay in almost a very ordinary, you know, low end colony and he used to repair pens of lakhs of rupees, all things. Unfortunately, he also passed away during COVID. And of course, there are some images I will just skip to. There is a story behind each and every pen. There are about 10 slides over here. Pens, most beautiful pens on which I've been reading or discussing, They're wonderful. And when you have so much from all over the world, 
I was very proud to find, uh, we have Anush Poddar, I call him the Indian in America, AP Limited Edition fountain pens, so I call him the Indian in USA and uh, he makes limited edition pens, nowadays he makes more number of pens also I am told, I just met him, he is from Calcutta and when I asked him, so can I meet you in Calcutta, I said I was born and educated in Calcutta, then I studied in London, um, I have my office in Singapore, I produce in America, so I said, uh, where, do, where do I meet you? He says, somewhere on this earth. He says, wow. So I said, I'm in Calcutta, Jando. But they are expensive pens. I mean, some pens which were very beautiful. The Hanuman pen by him was more than 8 lakhs of rupees. And But we have a competitor from India to all these expensive pens. This was the Shiviana series, Maki process, which is a very tedious process of lacquering the pen 20, 30 times. They use actual stones and stone powder, lapis lazuli, malachite and so on. So the powder used, the gold powder used, silver powder used to make lovely pens. So ultimately it comes to the manufacturers who look at it as a business, whether it's a cheap pen costing 50, 500, 5,000, 50,000, 5 lakhs, 5 crores. 15 crores we have touched, I don't know, very soon there might be a pen of 20 crores of rupees also. And they cater majorly to the users, the functional users who use it for office, for banks, for exams, for marks. And then there are collectors like me, Sean and others here in the audience. I mean, th this is the whole triangle of um, the pen game. And I can say, do use a fountain pen today and write a letter to somebody. Thank you so much. <laughs>